Farooq and as my colleague Aisha was just mentioning, the collegium remains our top focus this hour and the latest that we are bringing to you is that the plea with regards to whether or not the RTI uh, comes, whether the RTI will have the collegium come under it has been dismissed. For more details, let's quickly go across uh, to Arunima. Arunima, it's important to talk about uh, how uh, this this decision is going to in fact retain the autonomy of the judiciary uh, to be more specific, the collegium. One of the criticisms that has come from the law minister also about the collegium system is that it is opaque. Uh, which means that you just don't know on what basis a particular candidate is selected and on what basis right. a name is rejected. To which the Supreme Court has always come out and said that since, uh, you know, we are considering future careers of uh, members of the judiciary, either members of the bar or people uh, who are in, in uh, you know, high courts of various countries, if you put out in public domain whatever the intelligence input is about them or the reasons that are discussed are to suppose, uh, dis you know, reject the candidature, then that, that could jeopardize that person's career further. And that is why only a group of five judges, the senior most judges, know what thread bear as to what are the pros and cons of that person. So that is the reason they have time and again said uh, that you can't go public. However, they have taken a step further and now started releasing the minutes of the meeting. And they're saying that this is a work in progress. Of course, something that the executive and the critics of the collision system don't agree with. Right, and this is happening at a time when we've already seen uh, the, the the tussle take place between the centre and the judiciary. If you could take us uh, through all those details uh, that, you know, because we've seen the collegium become a topic of discussion. There's a tussle that's already on. Even the NJAC uh, proposal has uh, come back into the spotlight. If you could take us through all those details. Yes, it all began when law minister spoke to CNN News 18 and he, he called the collegial system opaque and tra non-transparent and said that members of the bar, members of uh, judiciary, higher judiciary, they have also approached him to say uh, that the NJAC was a better system. We that then heard, uh, you know, Justice uh, Sanjay Kishan call, um, rebuke the minister in a way by saying that, you know, this is not the kind of uh, comment we expect from the law minister of the country. If a law has been upheld, by the Supreme Court or rejected by the Supreme Court. That is the law of the land and everybody must follow. That reference was uh, to, to NJAC, which was rejected by the Supreme Court. Then yesterday on the floor of the upper house, Malikarjun Kharge mm -hmm. and Dr. John Pritas asked whether there was any proposal to bring back NJAC. In a, in a written response, Kiran Rijiju said that there was no such proposal at that stage. Now, Manish Tiwari, the Congress MP, has brought the matter again in Lok Sabha. He has sought a discussion. Um, what he has said, I'm just reading out from his notice. Right. He said that, that, you know, Honorable Law Minister's statement, Prime Minister Sai, undermines the faith of people in judiciary of the country. So that adjournment no, motion has, uh, you know, notice has been given. Law Minister reacted to it saying that, you know, we don't work as Congress would. All right. Arunima, also, you know, uh, uh, the three-judge bench, which is headed by Sanjay um, Kishan Call, has also called out the role which is being played by high constitutional functionaries. Uh, who are these high constitutional functionaries that he's referring to? We also know that Jigdeep uh, Dhankar also in his uh, opening speech has referred to this entire tussle. Uh, if you could throw more light on these aspects. So I've just, just discussed with you what the law minister said and how this debate was started by the union law minister. Uh, the vice president of the country, the chair of the Rajya Sabha, Jagdeep Dhankar, who's a, who's a, who was a member of the bar himself, right. he waded in the controversy as well at the LM Singh Memorial Lecture where he mentioned for the first time uh, this issue. And then from the chair in Rajya Sabha also, he said that there is no other precedent where uh, the mandate of the people was set aside and uh, the supremacy of parliamentary form of democracy was compromised by the judiciary. So he said that as well. And that led to a lot of speculation whether, you know, NJAC was, was rejected by the Supreme Court back in 2015. Seven years later, for these commentaries to come out led to a lot of speculation that is the government then planning to bring back NJAC with some amendments. And that's the exact question that Malika Arjun Kharge had asked in Rajya Sabha, to which Kiran Rijuju said that there is no such proposal at this stage. However, um, you could see the government engaging with the, with the judiciary in some way uh, to refine the system of, of uh, appointment of judges because the government it is, very, it is not comfortable with the current system of collegium. All right. I, and I, I remember that you also did that interview with Kiran Rijiju when he uh, spoke about NJAC in great detail and why the centre feels the need uh, to bring it back. Uh, you must expand on that aspect as well. 
So the question that I put to Kiran Rijiju in that interview was that, you know, he, why did he think that the collegium system uh, was, was not the best system as far as judicial appointment was concerned? He said that, you know, first and foremost, the collegium system is a system where the judges appoint the judges themselves. So there are charges of, uh, you know, what, what colloquially is called uncle judges and auntie judges, basically meaning the judges only appoint those uh, ju uh, judges or lawyers whom they know personally, there is some kind of a connection between them. So merit is, is not always a criteria there. That's the first charge that was made. The second thing that he said, that there is so much of pendency in the higher judiciary, the judges should uh, utilize their time and energy to decide cases and not divide their time in administrative work like judicial appointment, leave that to other uh, you know agencies. That was his second charge. And third, he said, that when the parliament uh, passed the NJAC bill, it was an unanimous decision across the political spectrum. MPs got together and gave it his nod. So it had the will of the people. The mandate of the people uh, was represented in the NJAC uh, Act as, as it was passed by parliament then. And he said, therefore, the judiciary should not have rejected the mandate of the people, a charge that was repeated uh, by the vice president. All right, stay with me, Arunima.